scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That the spirit of prophecy comes. The spirit of prophecy is the spirit that creates. That creates. I don't mean on me. I mean on you. Like it's coming on someone now. That's what I hear in the spirit. No, no, it's not word of knowledge. The spirit of prophecy. And you begin to speak forth. Inside, outside, that's what is happening. The spirit of prophecy. Anything you utter under that anointing will come to pass. That's how God uses you to solve. It's called a miracle service. But it's important to understand what God does. It's important to understand how he wants to move. That's what makes him Lord. You don't come in with your formula and box him. You will never see the power of God that way. That's why many people see limited miracles. You have to allow him right of way. And be sensitive enough to allow him define how he wants to be known. Per service. Naimaka Suchada the spirit of prophecy today that lady bring her the spirit of prophecy is falling on people the spirit of prophecy is falling on people Lord let the portal for it be open I open it in the realm of the spirit the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy it shall come to pass in the latter day, saith the Lord, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men will see the church. I release it in the name of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit that creates by speaking for, speaking for, speaking for, establishing realities, speaking for. I place an anointing upon the atmosphere in the name of Jesus for the spirit of prophecy. Listen, many of us may not understand the implication. It's not about people running down and falling on the ground. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's why we sang the song we sang. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light the candle. Light me, Lord. For when His light comes upon you, you will never walk in darkness.
Lord is going to use her. The Lord will use this lady for his glory. The Lord will use her for his glory. Lord, glorify yourself in her life. Let her life never be the same. Show her things. Reveal yourself to her. The siege over your life is broken. The siege over your destiny is broken. The siege over your destiny is broken. Please sit down if you can. Tonight's meeting will be a powerful meeting. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. young man you take that fire right now in the name of Jesus you will step into new levels new dimensions of grace new levels and new dimensions of grace I hear in my spirit restoration 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 the mantle is coming on men. I see missing things returning to people. Restoration. Shabakata. Shagata baratatosh. Restoration. By the Spirit. Restoration. Help them, please. Restoration. Restoration. Kala posokaya. Restoration of joy, restoration of peace. I prophesy it, I create it, I make it happen. I make it happen. I make it happen by a sent word. Restoration, 
restoration restoration Father let there be restoration strange testimony of divine restoration strange testimony of divine restoration I believe in the Lord and I believe that it's his will to give us miracles this night. I believe with all my heart that it is God's will that no one will walk and go back the same way he came. That's what I believe. I believe it with all my heart. Father, let everything that leaves your people today never return to them. Never return to them. Never return to them. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down for a few minutes if you can. Just sit for a few minutes. Please, the anointing oils. The Lord gave me before I minister will be very, very fast, very fast, but there will be dramatic testimonies. Dramatic testimonies. While I was praying, I saw myself anointing people with oil. The Lord says, Do as you have seen. So, before I begin to pray, I'm going to pray on an anointing oil. God gave me an encounter during the end of the year. He said, I have multiplied my anointing and my grace upon your life. You will see wonders in your midst. That's what God told me. You will see wonders, not miracles. Wonders in your midst. Wonders in your midst. For as you move, I will move. That's what the Lord said. As you move. When God increases a man's anointing, it's not for himself. He increases his anointing because the Bible says, where sin abound, much more grace. God knows that the times that befall men are wicked times that will not need a casual anointing. Light me, Lord. Light my way. Light me, Lord. Like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Let me just talk on one thing. Then we'll pray. Please be very sensitive to what God is doing. I'm not sure I can teach everything that I had planned for. I just plan to challenge us. But I'll just share one thing. There is a lady and a guy that the power of God will touch outside. Please bring them. I want to talk to them. A lady outside and a gentleman two of them the anointing of god will come mighty upon them mighty upon them Sisters, it pays to walk with the Lord. It pays to walk with the Lord. You know why many people never carry the presence of God? We have deceived people for a long time that there is nothing to do to carry the presence of God. Nothing can be farther from that truth. There is a huge price. A huge price 
to carry the presence of God. Those who don't walk in the reality, unfortunately, are the ones who teach about it the most. And they teach all kinds of theories and grammar. And deceive people in the body of Christ that there's nothing to be done. Just believe. Are you joking? Everything that is of value has a price, brothers and sisters. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. You want to command signs and wonders, there is a huge price. The price is death. The price is death. The price is not negotiation. Only dead men carry the glory of God. The glory of God is not pure. Only dead men carry his glory. Only dead men carry his glory. Ask that I declare, Lord, I bring your presence into the lives of these people. May their lives never be the same. I stretch my hands over them. I declare that this cause that has followed your family, I bring it to an end. The Bible says to appoint unto them that morning Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. It's not theory. It's not a book you write. It's a reality. It's not something you explain. I told us that the Bible says it's a year of trial. Remember the teaching. That there will be less talk. Less talk. God, God has said it again. God told me that there will be less talk. There's too much noise making in the body of Christ. Noise making. Excellent communications that carry no life, no power. So people go back with their problems. They keep getting intelligent in their brains. And no result to justify it. That's why we are singing that song. When his light comes upon you, the worst is that they will criticize you. But no one will deny the finger of God. Listen, it's not hard. It's because we men of God have lied to you. We gather you and make it look as if it's a fortune to get the hand of God. No, sir. There is a price. The price for God's presence is not wearing suits. The price for God's presence is not learning Greek and Hebrew. Please hear me, especially if you're a pastor here. The price for God's presence is not protocol and gathering people and feeling like a big man. I say it again. The price for the glory is death. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground. Anyone can preach what he wants to preach about it. But brother, if you want to be used by God in this generation, I tell you the price is death. You don't, you don't do part-time with God and get his glory. Part-time nonsense is the reason why many people never find God. There is a search. You seek him like a treasure that you will die if you don't find not a treasure that you do something else if you don't find him. You seek him as a treasure that you would die if you don't find him. That's the price for us. Glory. So don't let somebody tell you, every man, I can get to God. No, possibilities are defined by the sacrifices upon every man's altar. So don't let anyone fool you and say what any man can do, any other man can do. Theoretically true. But practically, my brother, no, sir. It's like saying any man can become a professor. You didn't lie. But any, everybody will not be a professor. There is a price. One of the things I want you to learn tonight is please may God grant you the grace to respect anointed people when you see them. Do you know why many people bring curses upon their lives? When a man of God has a track record with God, listen, let me, let me give you a, I don't know why I'm talking along this line. If this is all the encouragement before I begin to minister to you, some of the yokes upon the lives of people are not caused by, they are not caused by generational causes. They are caused by foolishness. Are we together now? Yeah. When, when,
when you trivialize what God is doing in a man, you trivialize the investment that God has made upon that man. And that grace never blesses you. You open up yourself to woes and tragedies. For instance, there are some of our family members right now. The problem they are crying for, that they can up from city to city, paying money for prayer, praying money for deliverance, paying money for counseling, can be received freely if only a heart of honor and humility is in place. When I was on my way coming back, I saw many people sitting down outside and just smiling, admiring the crowds of people coming. And honestly, not because I'm the one preaching. I said, my God, can a man be this foolish? Will I ever see the presence and the glory of God close to me and not jump at it? There are people who started traveling day before yesterday. They don't even know where to stay. And they are just more than grateful they are in the presence of God. And there are others who are in a minute walk away. It usually is like that. That's why people never receive. There are people, while I'm talking now, they are scattered all around Jesus. They say, wow, this guy. Maybe some will say he has charm. Go and get it. Get the charm that produces this result. You think it's easy to get a charm? May God grant you the fruit that when you see God in a place and a thing, you plunge in hands. Not that you sit down be a spectator and allow your life to waste. This year is not the year you should play with any opportunity God gives. Because on the other side of God's presence is a fierce, fierce 2007 waiting for disobedient people. Like Goshen and Egypt. Are you hearing the cries of the glory? Are you hearing the lamentation, the hopelessness? People are confused. They don't even know what to do with their lives again. Charms are not working again. Jobs are not working again. Everything is going. Away. And God calls a solemn assembly so that He will step in and bless you. Very Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it one more time. I I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities and the anointings that are available is a tragic situation to have men and women well-meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely never have anything work well in their life I identified a few reasons and I want you to learn this very quickly because we are going to pray Please, can you take this anointing? Just, can you take it and keep it here? Is that okay? Please, it's, it's nothing fetish. I'm just, it's just an instruction. Just, just soak the glory. Just drop it here. Thank you. Listen, why do these things happen to me? Number one, very quickly. 
the first reason I identified and I wrote it here is it may be a long sentence but just listen carefully the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs the conscious exclusion of Jesus not God not God Jesus in their lives and affairs the number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs I don't mean they are not born again that's not what I'm saying the conscious exclusion like you want to have a serious meeting then you tell somebody please can you go outside the conscious willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs are we together now you see there is this arrogance and over dependence of our intellectualism I'm not against intellectual prowess you should know that I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth but listen to me over dependence on our abilities our connection our education our wisdom business skills etc these things make us to consciously exclude Jesus in our lives usually we include Jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do oh I went to school doesn't Jesus know I'm a master's holder Jesus wait this is the issue of intelligence when we get to spiritual issues we bring you and then he steps out because he's, he's a very very gentle man pride over dependence on our ability Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says trust in the Lord with all your heart listen and lean not on your own understanding right the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path verse 7 says do not be wise be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the Lord and turn away from evil what is the evil depending on your strength let me tell you why God is humbling so many people this arrogance of being self-made self-made degree holder self-made doctor self-made professor self-made millionaire self there is no body that is self-made everybody is spirit assisted whether they know it or will accept it or not are we together the first reason why many people never get God's assistance over dependence on our ability oh my power and my might I built this great ministry I have sons and daughters to show for it I built so 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 and so I'm an intelligent man everybody tells me that attitude excludes you will never find the hand of God that way hear what I'm saying you may not like what I'm saying, but just pay attention. Over dependence on our abilities. When the miracle happens, then we religiously come and say, Lord, I give you glory. But even you, you know, you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done. Not because you were sincere with giving God glory. It's God's will that I may decrease that she alone may increase huh? all my qualification all my business acumen all my parenting skills all my CEO mentality when you come before God you pack those things box them and drop them and glorify his name is the reason why many cannot worship him is the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere including a church is the stage apostle joshua selman did you see him as he came did you see how people were running up and down and we stupidly take god out of our ministry you see that yeah that's what a lot of people have done you 
left seeking God and became a CEO of a church and you started running it by yourself. That's why it's killing you. Let me tell you something with God. One thing I know about God is not that I'm told God is a jealous God. I don't know how you want to interpret it. Use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing. God is a jealous God. The jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And we are tight. We wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then, by the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, oh God, God, you, you know, ah, ah. You said you're a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people. You continue. Listen, when other men are thriving in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. I'm a testimony of the love and the faithfulness of God. Are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. The embarrassment, still on that same point. The embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of on God. The embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped. There are many people who like to say, nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God did hands on me. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, Son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used a tree to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, Abba, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing. That's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you'll find out that you never marry. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind, they need me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've I mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, Use your power and your might. And keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing. I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. 
I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere out, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I will tell you that. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling, that he, he made one million. You see that? It's wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, no, I must get my own one million. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can have it. You can have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. And Jimmy, if you point someone here and tell him there is a multi-million naira business in Abuja you want to connect him with, will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I said, which time I will slap you now. You know, with the money, we'll have a time together. Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God becomes something you have to advise yourself to go, it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, involve your children in your conviction. Especially if your children are as small as this are, are, are little children. Are we together? Don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise. They should make noise. It's better to make noise in the presence of God than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life. Let them come and sleep here. Nobody's complaining. I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just acting you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving, I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah Kosatai. I acknowledge you. Listen. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry. Except the Lord builds a family. Except the Lord builds a business. They labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it. They labor in vain. Pouring water in the basket. Pouring water in a basket, it will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket, no miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one, let's look at the scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. Media, is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us, not like a threat or something. But I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31 from verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's result. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. He said, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. 
Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis. We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A herbalist is a herbalist. They gave you something. They said during the exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this word. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has his way of building a house. The kingdom has his way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has his way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt and we try to access help whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt, there was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. Are we together? I'm not against enlightenment but some of these some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God yet we adopt them and we call it civilization please look at me look at me let me have your attention I don't care the word of God transcends every generation whether you are young whether you are old there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of God say amen Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. You want to build a house. You are putting yourself under pressure. The world says go to the bank and go and collect loan. Correct? Go and collect loan. And you don't inquire from God. You run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day an armed robber comes and puts a gun. And says you better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay. The one you need to build the house and all of that and the journey starts and at the end of your life you have high blood pressure you have stroke the world says if you want to keep a wife beat her beat her once let her see you beat her then she will know you are man enough that's the world's way now you are born again but those advices are still coming once in a while your uncle says that advice i gave you i think he's working are we together The Bible says the divine health is a possibility. I'm not against medicine and all of that. But divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once. To believe God and say, Look, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's fashion of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate then later on when it gets to hard, they say, let's pray in tongues for five minutes. 
God who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've had preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, Am I was touched by ah, ah. See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is clean. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there, some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. Hell is very, very good. So you can be as arrogant as you want to be. And say I'm an atheist. I went to America and I spent two, two years. I went to Harvard. I, that's alright. You are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it lasts. But I can tell you one thing. Only a fool will say in his heart. There is no God. Please hear me. Some of us are parents. And I say all due respect. There are many fathers and there are many mothers, some listening to me by radio. Your family is most diving because as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. When your wife is praying, you now say, honey, make sure you pray for me. You just enter the blanket. No. Let me challenge any young man here planning to marry. If you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry, you are in trouble. You better catch up. Join prayer band on Tuesday. Join have a personal prayer time and double up and i'm not joking i'm not joking your spirituality defines everything i wish above all things that you prosper even to the degree that your soul prospers what shall it profit a man the bible says if you gain the whole world if you have all the ministries in the world and at the end of it lose your soul praise the lord so there are people seated hearing me you you really need to ask yourself this question. Have, have I been saved? Am I born again? I know I came for healing. I came for a miracle. I know I'm 65 years old. I know I'm 12 years old. Are you born again? Have you really brought Jesus to your life? An open invitation to say, Lord, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. My intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you. I come to you. As a child will run to his father. Right? The prodigal son came to himself. And said look. How many hired servants has my father? I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say father. I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me now as one of your servants. And the Bible says while he saw him. Coming afar off. He ran. Embraced him. Kissed him. And restored and put back the sin. The evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ. That you took beer and drove yourself from Kaduna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention. Two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online, pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, Take upon me my yoke and learn of me. For I am lowly in heart. Right? He says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. 
two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name, Jesus. Jesus. Are we together? This westernization that has made everything called God. There are people God is a donkey. There are people God is a tortoise. There are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something. But we are talking about Jesus, the name that is above all names. When he is lifted, then he will draw all men to himself. The second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying, man of God, sincerely, I've responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflows scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here and say, man of God, I need you to talk to me, to, to, to pray for me. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are too big, please go back. Two. Come and stand and passionately cry before God. Three. Passionately cry before God. Lord, I've come to you from the depth of my heart. I can't keep playing games with you. Keep coming. Are you running? Leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back. There's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out. If your friend holds you back, I assure you there is a spirit. Leave him and run and come. Don't say, I came with my girlfriend. I came with my boyfriend. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Keep clapping, please. Motivate them as they're coming. Man of God, it's as if you've been talking to me. Yes, you are right. You are the one I've been talking to. And Jesus is calling you. Rush to him. Say, Lord, I'm tired. I, I can't keep fighting this for long. I got admission into APU and I became something else. I, I became a graduate and I became something else. I'm not ashamed. I'm coming to you. It is like an award ceremony. You are not closing your eyes. Please run to Jesus. The Lord is still telling me there are people. In the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Come and stand before him. And shame the devil over your destiny. Shame the devil over your destiny. Listen. Many of us standing here are young people. One day you are going to be a father. One day you are going to be a mother. The father and the mother you hate right now. That made you got into your lifestyle. They had an opportunity when they were young. They ignored Jesus but embraced education. So they became graduates without Christ. And they married without Christ. Although the wedding was done in the church. And the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family. The average young man seated here, in the next 5 to 10 years, he will be married. Your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home. Every stupid man today was a stupid young man. Correct? He married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home. We are sick and tired of a godless society. A society that has no respect for God. We, we are pushing God out and saying, look, look, you know, I'm, I'm too fine for all this, this church thing. No. Addiction is the trend. Addiction for God. Outspoken addiction. Listen, I salute you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard. Nobody's morning. It's a thing of joy. I'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life. There are many of you, years after now, you will be leading others. Ladies, you are standing here for the sake of your children. One day, they will look at you and say, Mommy, thank you for giving your life to Jesus when you were 21. Thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears. There's no magic about a great future. You must run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain. And for those of us who are sitting down, 
that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say Lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah I'm not here to condemn you no no with all the love in my heart if I had my way I would hug every one of you because you have made a decision that will save a generation everyone who rejects Christ has implicated his generation because you can only give what you have those of you in front please lift your right hand seriously lift it high to the heavens and say after me Lord Jesus please say it from your heart say it again Lord Jesus don't worry you can cry it's alright Lord Jesus don't baby look at me look at me I love you there is a boy that disturbs you eh? send that boy a text and say Joshua Selma ask you to send him a text you never come near you again because you love God and God wants to use you hmm? you keep loving God and that boy keeps I don't know who he is drive him far from your life tell him I said so in Jesus name huh? so you pray that prayer say after me Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart this night I have heard your word and I come to you asking you to forgive me asking you to cleanse me I believe I can be better than I am now so I don't fight you again come into my heart it belongs to you take everything that is mine and make it yours use me for your glory every condemnation every guilt upon my life lives now and forever in Jesus name keep your hands lifted I want to pray for you father look at the ones you died for they have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life and from today, the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life and I release grace upon you to invite others into your life. I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you, and don't favor the cause of the kingdom, may today be your party with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now, please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly, and you'll be back. Two instructions, please listen. One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking, and we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details, your name, and your number and whatever information we need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up number two and please let this be an announcement to the whole house as a general rule every time you are born again the moment you are born again automatically you are a member of the prayer department for one month automatically are we together when you are born again so that for those of us who brought them now if any of your loved ones is among the people you encourage them automatically for the next one month you are a member of the prayer department is a model we have used from the onset of this ministry when people get born again the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community once they have a community of like-minded people that love God they will have the strength to be able to shake up the things that are limitations but if you leave them alone sooner or later the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back are we together now so please, the prayer department, 4 to 6 at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk, you begin to understand spiritual things. And then from there, your growth continues. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Please go ahead and follow the lady. Please, you should create multiple points for them. Appreciate them, everyone.
If I told you receive your job, you will clap with all your heart. Keep clapping till they go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to God's principles will be very fast please just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to God's principles Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Write one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. We may not have time. Just write them. You can go and read them during your personal time with God. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Look up please. You know that one of the mandates that God has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom. I am, I am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives. So ignorance and disobedience is very costly. Number three, please, quickly. Number three. The third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the Bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the condition to experience the the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did I offend though? I didn't offend it. I left the village peacefully. Look, he said, in iniquity did my mother conceive. You know the meaning of that? I was never given an opportunity to choose whether I want the devil to oppress me or not. The moment you are born, that reality implicates you. At once. Do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your christian life and every part of your christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone unturned to see that it destroys you. John 10.10 10 says the thief cometh not. But for to steal. To kill and to destroy. He said but I am come. That ye may have life. And that you may have it more abundantly. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Paul himself speaking. He says once and again I desire to come unto you. But Satan 
hindered us. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. But Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. That's why God puts a miracle service like this. To come and break down that, that system that he has built over the lives of people. I gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and I want to repeat it. Never consult mediums, the occult, and so on and so forth for help. No. Never consult mediums, listen, the occult, the dark world, all kinds of extraterrestrial, astral, transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help. Jesus said, I am the door. Every other person who comes came through the window. I am the door. I am the door. When you come in through the door, you are safe. You come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. To play the harlot after them. I will even set my face against that soul. And I will cut him from off among his people. People who consult what? Familiar spirits. People who consult mediums. Occultic activities. Right? Many of them parading as different things. You go to your village. You enter one room. They say sit down. We want to do something for you. Incisions all around for protection. Say, eat this razor blade. Anybody that touches you, that razor blade will strike you. Demonic activities. They concoct one kind of drink and they tell you, take it. And recite all kinds of things. The Bible says, whoever does that, I personally, I will set my face against it. Ah, but apostle, I've done it already. You are welcome to the miracle service. That's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent for from all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior to husbands who put their wives all kinds of, of things people have people have arrows in their ha homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms let's be sincere things you hide under your carpet you are just sitting down you see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals they wake you in the middle of the night all that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life, or automatically you need to be prayed for. Automatically. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Quickly, please. We we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by His grace we've made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 and 11. If you are not there, just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter, pass through the fire. Or who used divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consultor of mediums. Listen, I'm listening to them. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires. Necromancy. 
transcendental meditation, astral travels, all kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns. This is Africa, and I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. My God. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or they received Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of things. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend it. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight. They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings. But brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck and the body shall be destroyed because... This is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Do not reject empowerment. Listen. Empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. You cannot live into this wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing. That outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith, just fear. You want to nod your head and rest a little. The driver just might say, Driver, be careful, oh please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I say, No, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old. Don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are. Gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not on you, you are not yet a man. A 
because gone are the days where you fight horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks, and a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature, makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically, but she will call you from Italy to come and die in your village. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they, as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head. My, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is a powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting, you have something. You, see that? you make bold claims without the anointing, they visit you in the night. You make bold claims with the anointing, whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible art thou in thy ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus, from tonight. Some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything. As you are going back to your house, it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying, no more. No more. No more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No. I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you. And find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes and says, everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Please take it serious. There are some habits people, you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand up on your life to clear because it's a spirit. Fill me up.
please quickly quickly make sure you are praying it's over I declare it it's my year of trial Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. I tell you, strange things are already happening inside and outside. This was the instruction the Lord gave me. That at the point this oil touches the head of everyone, then we begin to speak dramatic miracles, dramatic deliverances. Bring them out, lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the Living God, everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil, any stranger, Kabataya, any covenant, every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone, I decree and declare right now by the fire of the spirit let there be deliverance right now inside and outside yokes inside and outside i stand upon this oil i stand upon this place i decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation Right now in the name of Jesus, I command the spirits, I command the devils, of you go from their lives now, of you go from their lives now, bring them out. Lift your hands. At the count of three, you will shout Jesus. My God, I see massive deliverance outside. Massive deliverance outside. Freedom for people and families. At the count of three. That's all I want you to do. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be complete deliverance. One, two, shout it now. Three. Jokes be destroyed. Jokes be destroyed. Every spirit. Every force, every spirit, every force, every spirit, every force, every spirit. Lift your hands. The spirits that cause failure, that everything you do, you don't succeed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command them to leave you now. Leave you now. Leave you now. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. Lift your hands. My God. I want to pray for students because I'm seeing like a blue flame. There is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students. You are a student here, get ready. Liberty comes to you at the count of three. One, two, three. Leave them right now. Leave them right now. They are academics. Oh, they have not been able to pass They have not been able to graduate. I command that spirit. You must go now. You must go now. You must go now. Lift 
your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out never work out. Now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression as I speak now let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Help them please. Bad luck. Lift your hands. I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen. Listen. I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women. Inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands and pray for families, not just individuals. So the power of God will come upon you for your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands. Every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus. I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Syria. She's in Syria. That's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there's a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be fast. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Please look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family. And God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
that as my hand comes on both of you, let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on, Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here since 29th December. You have been bleeding non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. Okay. We are going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request. Did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. Trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, educate. Okay. Pastor Ejimi will be outside. He will be outside with um, Shade. Come, stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking. Now, stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them. Father, please announce them. As they lay hands on the sick, in the name of Jesus, as they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. You can meet them. They can go outside here. And then, in the name of Jesus Christ, as they lay hands on you, please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, um, Benga, Okay, promise you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, Benga, Mike, and promise you can go outside. You, you, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then, Pastor Fa, you can join me and then we'll do it in worship team. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is very
burdens are lifted of Calvary. A Calvary chill fade of me. request Aaron is here just just indicate and then you drop it please don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up because by the time you go back they will have collected
is breaking limitations. The Lord is breaking limitations. Breaking limitations. Breaking limitations. Breaking limitations. Hallelujah. 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 Please hold your hands all across the building. In the next five minutes, we are going to pray in tongues. The Lord is doing something in this place tonight. I began to sense this right from the morning. Hold your hands together. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray. Instrumentalists, don't stop praying. We are going to pray in tongues. Listen, within these five minutes, there will be a bursting. Something will break open. As you pray, for many of us, there will be a release of very deep spiritual virtues. This is not just ordinary prayer. Trust me. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. Zembro dos cobran de calabas sota pacata Racata pocoto pocoto papa 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 The Bible says while they prayed the Holy Ghost said unto them Separate me Paul and Barnabas Lord as we pray tonight Let there be impartations Let there be openings Openings of portals Openings of vessels. Pray, pray. So to get the get the get the get Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Get the baka pra te get the. la pariada bakataya. The Holy Ghost is engaging your spirit man. The Holy Ghost is engaging your spirit man. Right to the back. Make sure you pray. Spiritual doors are opening. Spiritual doors are opening. I see spiritual doors opening. Spiritual doors are opening. Access, access, access. Access is being given to men. Access to deep spiritual things. Access, access is being given to men. Access in the spirit. Access in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. He told Jacob, For as a prince, you have fought with God and prevailed. Shatata pakara baba bakata rakata protokoto polodo bos shakata kata rakata pakoto bos manta prata kata lekata proskoto prokotos e prakata baba 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 come on lift your voice and pray Rekete, 
us the voices. Oh, 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 oh. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. This is koinonia, an experience of intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's a family that has been on my mind. I don't know if they are here. The family with the... Is it the mad person now? Or the... Are they here? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We're in for an experience tonight. I began to see this right from the morning. I'm telling you, chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. I still hear this in my spirit. Chains are breaking. 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 Oh, let the chains break. Every chain over everyone here. Every chain. Every chain, every chain, every assault of darkness, every chain by the fire of the Holy Ghost, every chain, every chain, every chain is broken right now. Chains of habits, chains of limitations. You're the person. Please confirm it. Where's the family that there was a there are people that spoke to me about someone. They are not here. Someone who got mad or psychosomatic. It's not a word of knowledge. There is a family that I'm supposed to minister to here. Okay, if they are not around, that's okay. Why are you here? Your brother, your elder brother. What's wrong with him? Come. How many years? Seven years. Where is he? At home. I'll pray the Lord will use you as a point of contact. Lord Jesus, let your power touch the brother, even through him, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me many ladies with abdominal pain. Just place your hand there right now. The Lord is showing me many people, especially ladies. Hallelujah. I'm just going to rebuke it and I see like, like they look like guns, but it's fire, literal fire. It will live and it will hit you and that's the end of it. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Right now, I cause that pain. Go now. Go now. 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 Every devil of darkness responsible for every pain, I cause you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Be healed right now. Be healed. The power of God is healing them right now. Right now. Right now. You may not even know right now. The sign is that it will touch you. It must touch you. You can't stand on your feet. If you are part of this list, it will touch you. That's what the Lord is showing me. 
Haparate ketetete baka. So protoko to balaba kata pati adaba. Sonto pakaria kata. I cause that pain. I cause that spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone lay your hand on your chest. The Lord is going to rebuke blood conditions right now. Blood conditions. Blood conditions. Blood conditions. All those who are part of it, there will be this same fire. It will come upon you in a mighty way. It's a sign that you are the one God is touching. This is not something vague. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Right now, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, blood conditions, I speak to you. All those affected, may the fire of God set you free. Now. 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 Now the power of God is touching people. Right now. Right now. I cause that devil. I cause that devil. I cause that devil. I cause that devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cause that spirit. I cause that spirit. I see visions of the spirits of infirmity. Living people. Living people. Living people. In the mighty name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. The Lord is showing me two ladies. And I'm seeing a guy. You have a problem with sleeping. You don't sleep. No matter what happens, you don't sleep. You just stay awake and sleep never comes. Where are they? Two ladies I see the Lord showing me. Please, let's save time. And one guy. Please save time if, if, if you are the one. Just so that save us all of the time. How long has it been? Huh? Six months. How about you? Huh? I'm seeing your hands chained. Your own situation. There's, there's one more lady. The Lord is showing me. There's still one more lady. There's one more lady. The Lord is showing me. Hallelujah. Come, I have to pray for you. Yours is more than a sleep problem. Hold my hands. I cast this chain in the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go right now. And I break by the power of the Holy Spirit. This spirit that causes you not to sleep. You are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. How many months? Six months. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Be free right now. You will begin to sleep normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is touching someone's ear. Right now as I speak. The Lord is touching someone's ear. You will literally feel as though a cotton board. Is put in your ear. And all of a sudden. It will open up and become clearer. Thank you Lord Jesus. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing a lady of a breast lump. You began to see this. You've not even shared it with many people. Breast lump is living right now. Right now. Dissolving and going back to hell. Never to return to you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are four people. Listen. There are four families that as I speak right now, the angel of the Lord is going to their homes and is causing major breakthroughs. Listen. Listen. It's not, it's not just prophecy for everybody. Four exact people. One. There are four of them. Two. The angel of the Lord literally, literally, literally 
is entering these homes and they are receiving dramatic breakthroughs dramatic breakthroughs the Lord is showing me over 10 people and I see academic chains this is what I see 10 people 10 people and this is not your fault 10 people I'm going to begin to count 1 to 10 and goodness it's like fire 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 I curse those spirits 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 I curse those chains I curse those chains I curse those chains It comes to an end. I tell you, it comes to an end. That chain breaks now and forever. It comes to an end. Hallelujah. Let's just flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing. If this is all he does tonight, that's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing two eyes in the spirit and God wants to open up at least 19 people here in the realm of visions and supernatural experiences. Listen, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, prophetic fountains, those eyes in the spirit, Sheketata Parata. Sheketete Pokotos. At least 19 people, at least 19 people, Shataka Bariata, fire, physical fire coming upon your eyes, physical fire coming upon your eyes. Open them up, oh God, to these dimensions of supernatural revelations. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord. And God wants to cause barrenness from two families. Now, two families, right now, just two families. Father, wherever these families are represented, right now, let your power visit and set them free now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, this row. All of you here, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. From the front, right to the back, there are people that God again is visiting their families. Families, families. God is bringing breakthrough right now right now just this road lord in the name of jesus let those families let the angel of the lord there are angels walking through this crowd right now right now right now in the name that is above all names angels of the lord walking to families performing specific miracles specific miracles specific miracles Specific miracles. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. 
Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hallelujah. I cast that spirit from this lady in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Lift your hands. There are some devils that need to leave this place right now. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. God is bringing mighty deliverance for people now. Every service is miracle service. Are you getting my point now? We are going to shout that name Jesus. My goodness. I'm telling you, major deliverances that will bring breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. The symbol. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name. I command every devil and every spirit every act of witchcraft and divination in the name of jesus and at the count of three they must come out of their hiding places and go never to return are you ready now one two three i cause devils now i cause spirits now i cause spirits every wicked spirit out of God's people out of every family now I break spells I break witchcraft I break the power of divination bring them out bring them out I cost that power it's not just them families they are families i set fire 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 upon altars i set fire i set fire upon Hallelujah. Lift your hands again. God is visiting families. This is not about you. All the people here are representing families. Lift your hands. Oh, the fire of God must fish them out. There is no hiding for any spirit. Shh. At the count of three, you will shout that name at the top of your voice. And a sword of the spirit will go to your family. There must be deliverance tonight. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Jesus! <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, How awe inspiring are your ways? It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. All the people you see here, 
they are representing their families God is stepping into families those doors must be open I see ancient gates in the spirit ancient gates and I'm about to command them to open listen when I command those gates to open those affected you will feel it physically these are the gates that cause limitations over people and families but in the name that is above all names I come tonight under this yeah, apostolic yeah. and prophetic anointing <laughs> I command you be open. I command you be open. Hallelujah. Any family, lift your hands that is tied down by any kind of limitation. I don't care what it is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if that spirit has survived anywhere else in this place, this is the mount of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command those doors open now. I command those doors open now. Doors of breakthrough be 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 open now. By the force of the spirit, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it, shout it. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that every force stopping the advancement of my family by the fire of the Holy Ghost live now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every power you must be in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Pick up your Bibles, Daniel chapter 10. The devil is in trouble tonight. Daniel chapter 10. You have come for koinonia. It's an experience. It's a mountain. Something must change about your life. Daniel chapter 10. Verse 10. And behold. An hand touched me. And set me upon my knees. And upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, 
understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee I am now sent and when he had spoken this word to me I stood trembling verse 12 then said he unto me fear not Daniel had been fasting and praying he said for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God thy words were heard and I am come to thee for thy words verse 13 but the prince listen but the prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me one and twenty days and lo Michael one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia listen the Bible says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood then it says against principalities against powers then against rulers then against spiritual wickedness they do not operate in the earth realm the Bible says they operate in the heavenlies. This prince of Persia was the territorial spirit across the land of Persia. So when Gabriel was bringing the answer, the solution, that prince stopped him. I have been put in charge of this territory to make sure that breakthrough does not come to men. To make sure that men are not lifted. But there was a man in the earth realm who kept praying. And while he prayed, it was on the strength of his authorization that from the arsenals of heaven, the archangel Michael had to come because he's the archangel in charge of war. We are going to pray tonight. Every land has territories. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every land has territories. And there are spirits. Those of you who have listened to the message, give me this mountain. There is a spiritual dimension to life. And there are, met, there are certain things that will never manifest in your life until you prevail in prayer. Jacob held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. He said, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. He said, your name will be changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you what we just read was the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, when you pray, it just comes. It, 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 it makes... Listen, the kingdom of God is a system. The earth realm is a system. Are you getting my point? It is as soon as Zion travails, hallelujah, that she will put forth. There is a birthing. This is the ninth month. If you didn't come to pray tonight, I'm so happy about the rain. Because you won't go anywhere. We are going to pray. Ah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? Yes, we are going to pray. Listen. We are going to confront powers. Zechariah chapter 1, please, quickly. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. Zechariah chapter 1. Verse 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw and I beheld what? Four horns. A horn is a symbol of authority. Next verse. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? What are these horns? And he answered me, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. These are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem. These are the horns that are making your father to never reconcile with your mother. These are the horns that make finances to stop when it's about to come. These are the horns hindering the gates of marriage. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then I said, what come this to do? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. These are the horns that have robbed you of your testimony, of your joy. He said, so that no man does what? 
lift up his head. They have put a barrier around your family and your life. And they have said no man will lift up his head. So every time you want to lift up your head, there are horns. They station them. Hear me and take seriously what I'm saying. They have drawn the boundaries. Man takata. Goodness. I tell you, I sense deliverance fire in this place tonight. Oh, those horns must leave. For sure. There are horns stationed across territories to make sure that men do not rise. Some of you, this is a limitation. You are the first person in your family to get to the university. There are horns. But tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to step out and put on our priestly regalia. We are going to confront the heavens. He told Job, he said, hast thou commanded thy morning? Did you speak into the heavenly territories? Did you command the things to align themselves? We are praying tonight. The Bible says the stars fought for Deborah. She was a warrior and the constellations arranged themselves to make sure that enchantments could not go to the heavens. Lift your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on now, you have to be more serious than this. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. That every power across my territory that wants to stop me and stop my family from rising up I challenge you tonight by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and begin to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus we Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we are praying tonight. Jude 1. Jude 1, verse 9. You will see tonight that Satan is interested in this body that you wear. Jude 1. Everyone read. Want to read. Hold on. Do you see Michael again? Michael in Daniel contending against powers. He shows up again in the book of Jude. Read on. Want to read. Hold on. He disputed about the what? Spirit, soul, 
body. Satan wanted the body of a man. Satan wants the bodies of men. Not just their spirits. Because without a body, without a body, demonic activities cannot be carried out. The church is called the body that the Holy Ghost uses. It's called the body of Christ. The body that the Holy Ghost wears. There is a law in this realm. That any spirit that does not have a body cannot function in this realm. So Satan wants the body of Moses. If he looked for the body of Moses, Moses in the Old Testament, how much more your own body? So he will afflict you. He wants your body. So he will manipulate your body and all kinds of objects moving around. But the Bible says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not. Listen. We are going to pray. I'm establishing a prayer point. Jesus entered the temple, which was his body, and he found out that there were strangers in that temple. Are you getting my point now? Those who should be in the temple were not there. And he found people doing business in the temple. There were transactions going on in his body. That's the same way Satan carries out all kinds of transactions in human bodies. And you hear people complaining. Objects are moving in my body. You see people sleep in the night. And all kinds of devilish things come to oppress them. Tonight we are going to pray. Are you getting my point? Please if you are sitting except you are under the anointing stand up. And let's take some time to pray. You must get angry tonight and let's pray. Because something must break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. That my body. Is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body. My body. Belongs to Jesus. Therefore, every strange spirit attempting to hold on to my body, I command you right now, depart from my body now. Lift your voice and pray. Every stranger, Every stranger, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere the gospel was preached, Jesus demonstrated that he was not only interested in the spirits of men, but their bodies. Yes, what healing does to your body is what salvation does to your spirit man. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the root of sickness. I want you to get ready because the devil is in trouble. There's fire burning in this place this night. No matter how mad a man is, 
he does not enter fire by mistake in the name of madness are you getting what i'm saying no matter how stupid a man is in his insanity he knows fire when he sees it the bible says he maketh his ministers winds are you getting my point and his messengers flames flames of fire every stranger in your body is about to leave i don't care what it is called sickness is that let me tell you how you know that these things are demonic because many of us when you pray on it it will go and then later on it will return right? you're a lady they pray for you and then for one or two or three months you find out that your period just comes normally no pain no nothing and then in the fourth month it backfires again there are people recurrent headache all kinds of devils a growth comes and then it goes you pray and try to treat it it goes we are going to set it on fire right now are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says know ye not that your body i showed you from the book of jude satan was fighting with michael over the body of moses hallelujah this body is your legal access for living and functioning in this realm if it is battered beyond repair your spirit will no longer be able to stay there and it will have to leave so if satan cannot get to manipulate your mind he will batter your body in a way that your spirit cannot live and it will have to go we are going to pray many of us as you are praying right now you will be surprised huh? now is the time to pray all those hold on please one minute genotype huh? I've read my bible from Genesis please listen this is very serious what I'm sharing there's no mention of any nonsense of genotype in this bible have you read your bible there are many ladies right now many guys they cannot even get married they can't think of anything because the devil put one rubbish embargo called genotype s s a s and all of those rubbish now you want to get married or you want to settle down they tell you no health wise every parent is carrying their child and running away the devil is in trouble tonight we are going to pray if he was not here he should not be in your life are you hearing what i'm saying believe what i'm saying whatever has affected this body has affected god's property and we're going to pray and invoke his presence that he will rise in his jealousy and attack any stranger are you hearing what i'm saying many of you as you pray growth will disappear see the trouble is that many of us have been praying but we we of course i know not here but generally we we do not know the power of the corporate anointing psalm 133 talks of god depositing the blessing where people are gathered together in unity that's different from your personal prayer life are you getting my point now we are going to pray there are traits of infirmities around your family there are traits of infirmity in your life there are many of us all sorts of embarrassing conditions skin problems to the minutest to anything hear me no matter how small it is it is according to your faith tonight are you getting what i'm saying he said whatever my father has not planted whatever he has not planted he must be uprooted don't sit down and tolerate it what you tolerate in your body the devil will use it to destroy you but when you resist the devil the bible says he will flee lift up your voice we are going to pray again say after me in the name of jesus christ every sickness every infirmity every abnormality in my body hear the word of the lord i command you to leave this body now I command you to leave this body now. 
Lift your voice and begin to pray. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Joel chapter 2. Let's start from verse 23. Joel 2, verse 23. One to read. Verse 24. Verse 25. Shout it with all your heart. Shout it. Listen, listen, listen. We are still praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Based on the word of God. I place demand. For restoration. In my life. In my family. Hallelujah. We are going to pray that prayer again. You know the areas you want restoration. Please we are not playing games tonight. The presence of God is here. Hallelujah. When we get to that party, we'll mention it. And we're going to pray. The Bible says, I will. It didn't say, I will send someone. I will supervise your restoration. Hallelujah. The years. We're going to say, Lord, turn the hands of time again. Turn the hands of time. Let that which the devil has stolen be restored. There are things that need to be restored tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive, receive sevenfold restoration, seven restoration of everything the devil has stolen in my life. Now mention them. Your health, whatever it is. Lift your voice and pray. Para 
Jesus, because our eyes will see the desires of our hearts and our hands will handle it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Just give me 10 15 minutes and we're out of here. If this is all we have done tonight, it is worth it. There's no place for you to sit, stand, sit on the floor, sit anywhere. Go ahead. The service is already on, so. Please, there should be no vacant seat. There are still people standing. The person is under the anointing. Let the person lie down on the floor and let someone use the seat. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what the word of God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. It's not even knowing that there is a kingdom principle. That's not revelation. Revelation is knowing how to make that principle work in your life. If it cannot work in your life, then it's useless. Hallelujah. See, we keep sharpening ourselves like this, like arrows in the presence of God. We're sharpening ourselves. Because we're trusting God to attain a statue in the spirit. Where no power in existence can stop your fulfilling God's destiny for your life. You believe that? There is a generation that is depending upon our faithfulness. The Bible says, he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. We are making investments in the spirit. We are laboring, we are traveling. You won't be surprised when you see your life and your prophetic destiny tomorrow because you will know that yes it is god's grace but paul said it this way i am what i am by the grace of god right but he said this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than he all there is grace that manifests as the favor of god and there is grace that manifests as supernatural empowerment to do hallelujah the lord is changing your life i'm telling you gradually the bible says line upon line precept upon precepts your value system your life the quality of your christian experience is changing and then like the 71 day he will trust you with responsibilities he will send you and you will be shocked to see 
that he has built you to be his finest the finest of the finest of the best don't trivialize what god is doing in your life brothers and sisters week after week you're submitting yourself to the dealings of the spirit and it will translate into something in your life you may not look like it now see that there is no athlete who wants to look good when you are rehearsing have you seen an athlete like that you are conscious of your shoe let it not have more no 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 when when you are training you will see footballers get dirty and all of that but when they lift that trophy huh they can now dress and enjoy the celebration my bible tells me that no man that warreth will entangle himself with civilian affairs these trainings will prune you it will it will it will build you listen to me it will challenge you it will stretch you it will provoke you but when you submit to the dealings of the spirit the end of it is peace something will happen in your life that money cannot buy something will happen in your life that is not common you will now know that it is not common to be yielded to the spirit it's not a gift not everybody is interested there are many people who are born again but very few people are interested in the things of the spirit so god is teaching us we spend time now to pray and travel in the spirit you cannot imagine the levels of victory and so you will just step home and you see that doors begin to open and some of you your loved ones will not know they will just say aha things are working well now things don't just work they are enforced in the spirit learn this learn this learn this one day it will change is a waste of time time does not change things are you getting me engaging kingdom principles 38 years that man was at the pool of bethesda in less than five minutes he got up he would have remained there forever so the word of god that you are receiving you must believe it please hear me you must believe it if you're just sitting down and watching every week and just looking and hoping that this word will make sense one day you may be deceiving yourself the bible says ever learning have you seen people like that they have all of the revelation but never coming to the comprehension of the truth depart from those kinds of people when you come into the presence of god give your heart it says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and it gives you an assurance what's the assurance that thy profiting may appear look let me tell you um you see if your life does not bear fruit after a particular time you will be frustrated because it's god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance are you hearing what i'm saying men do not have the ability to see the heart so your christian experience must translate into a testimony that glorifies the name of the lord are you hearing what i'm saying if it does not your family members will never see the relevance of your commitment to prayer and to the study of the word the disciplines and the constraints of the spirit say my life will bear fruit say it my life will bear fruit brothers and sisters if you go to your house and there is a sick person and you have a revelation and you pray for that sick person stand up my brother and you pray for that sick person and the sick person stands up do you know that that is a sermon that is more than one year of beckoning up? you don't need to invite people and say come for God no 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 no, no. The woman at the Samar the samaritan woman said come and see a man that has told me everything I've done. what is the result in your life that compels people to want to know about god if your life continues to remain a barren wilderness there is no reason why people should be attracted to your god there was something that ruth saw and she told naomi he said my your god will be my god 
Hallelujah. It's not just for you to come and watch a man of God doing great things. No. It's to provoke your spirit and you go back with that anointing. You're not falling down for nothing. Say, I'm anointed. Say it. Some of you are even laughing at yourself. Say it. It has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with being alive. Hallelujah. And you step into your house, you step into your place of work, and you step in as an ambassador, as an envoy. Don't let people mock your emoji. Emoji for nothing. Emoji, emoji. They keep calling you. When there's trouble, they pass you. You are emoji as a nickname. No. Emoji, you say yes. And they pass you and, and you are not contributing anything to the kingdom. Elisha said, hi, I love that guy. He said, let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. That there is a prophet in Israel. Can the devil look at your family and say, ah, if, if only I can shift Zuera out of the way. And like a big hen, you stay there and say you are invited. I have become a shield. He said, as for me and my house. For many of us, it's as for me and myself. It must translate beyond you. Are you getting my point? You shield others. You are minding your business and you see the devil trying to oppress somebody. You say, Satan is my business. Is my business whether you invite me or not it is my business you must let this person go hallelujah listen it's not enough for you don't get used to seeing miracles healings deliverances you know in Koinonia we are so used to miracles when it happens you just watch one of those things that's happened again you see it's a lesson. It's a handwriting upon your life. Are you hearing me? That God is challenging you and telling you that your life ought to be supernatural in every way. Not just by making noise and disturbing people when they are sleeping, praying in tongues. No. It must translate. It says, let your light so shine before who? Before yourself? Before men. You already know you have the light, but they do not know. It said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good and as a result, praise your father in heaven. When was the last time someone spoke to you about his situation and he said, that's all right. That's all right. I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you picked up your phone. You said, let's pray. Many of us, it's just, hey, yeah. See, I just returned from Koinonia. It was powerful this night. Ah, you missed. And then say, I'm, I'm having a little stomach ache. Say, oh it's like that let's let's just lie down it's too late the chemist is closed or, or, no 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 no. you need to get angry one day are you hearing what i'm saying as soon as you get home you hear your sister saying finally my name came out they are about to to downsize me and 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 do all of that and you say oh i'm sure that god knows how he work things out look at what you are saying you are the ambassador. You are the voice of God in that room. You must die. One of the things I've learned, listen to me. One of the things I've learned about walking in the anointing is that you must die to your ego. Hello? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of us are so conscious. What if I, I tell the people God will bless you and God doesn't bless them? Tomorrow they will now see me and say, Pastor, Pastor, That prayer, you know, people are so funny. Pastor, you prayed and the prayer didn't work. Oh. And you feel stupid, you feel embarrassed. If I do well, God should take the glory. If nothing happens, who should take the shame? Uh, answer me. Who should take the shame? So if you are taking the shame, you have been. Hallelujah. Go and pray for the sick person. Pray. Let the person die in your hands. No problem. Just pray. You now go and find out what is wrong with you. And then the person says, there's, there's one wound. If I open it, you say, ah, you wouldn't have even told me. Look, 
just quietly go to the hospital. Challenge your faith. Hallelujah. I say me, I'm not a man of God's wife. I want peace. I don't want to trouble Satan. Let him know. Take away, you see, I believe that our mindsets are changing. That mindset of, I don't trouble you, Satan. Don't trouble me too. Let's all mind our business. It does not work in this earth realm. Are you getting what I'm saying? It does not work in the earth realm. There are many of us, I will not be surprised that there are some of us who sit down like that. You believe that because you are not active in the things of the kingdom when the devil comes you will jump you and go and look for those who are really causing him trouble and he said the devil passed please pass i don't have anything i didn't look for any trouble it doesn't work that way satan does not disturb you because you have become a slave to him right but you must you must tear down the assaults of the devil over the lives of people say one more time i'm anointed say it i'm anointed the holy ghost just took over this meeting let's just flow with the way he's i'm anointed look at your hands everyone look at your hands i know you have been insulting it that it doesn't look nice forget about all those ones look at your hand whatever you have there is your hand whether it's rough or smooth it's irrelevant just look at your hand i'm talking about the spiritual the spiritual content i like you to say my hands represent the hands of jesus they carry the anointing of the holy spirit they can produce results and work wonders do you believe that this is god bless you this is my mentality this is my mentality my hands are not just for eating no it's, there is there is something upon my hands jesus has placed his hands upon my own hands many of us we keep falling down and rising but we are not blessing anybody i want to ask you a few questions just a few minutes and then we'll round up listen how many of us believe we are anointed we just said we're all anointed the question I have for you tonight is who has your anointing brought to the kingdom? Has your anointing been able to save anybody? I once was lost. Huh? Come brother. That this brother was lost and on the strength of the anointing that you have whether it was to save him, to get him healed he has now come into the saving knowledge of the kingdom. If your anointing, listen, I'll tell you why many people do not see more of the anointing in their life. They want anointing. And the first question is for what? What do you want it for? So you'll be speaking and people will fall down. If that is your definition of the anointing, if that is your scope, you know, especially the youth, we like power. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. You like the fact that you just sit down and say, I'm speaking. Some of you, while I was talking and things were happening, you were, it was as if you were pouring cold water in your body. Calm down. The Lord is speaking to you right now. Calm down. If there is no passion in your heart to see his kingdom come, I am telling you now, you do not need the anointing. And you shall receive dunamis. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Please project it for us. And you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power is to an end he says and you shall be what witnesses witnesses who is a witness who is a witness if tosin slaps this gentleman and i saw it what do you call me a witness if we go to the court i say tosin really slap i saw it so i'm a witness the holy ghost makes you a witness you were not there when jesus died are you are you getting what i'm saying you were not there when jesus died were you there you were not there on the cross but now you are standing to represent a message that you were not there physically so the holy ghost says at least i was i was i was there i was not in jesus on the cross but i was around i saw everything let me partner with you you do the talking and then i will prove that you are not a liar are you getting what I'm saying? 
so you tell the sick that Jesus has healed you all of this rubbish sickness is over and the Holy Ghost says yes I was there on the cross by his stripes this guy has been healed and you stretch forth your hands and the Holy Ghost validates that your claims are true everyone say I'm a witness but the, the challenge is that many of us are not witnesses indeed you have roommates you have people in your workplace and there's no transformation no transformation the Lord is speaking to us tonight hallelujah I may not have time to talk so much about it but I, I, I really wanted to talk extensively on soul winning tonight when God just took over we give him praise hallelujah we give him praise because at least he visited people and he blessed people but the question I have for us is that who is coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because of the investments of the spirit upon your life there are many of us who are the only ones who are born again in our family. There are many of us, you leave people just in and you get up and carry your Bible and come for koinonia. And you are happy. Again and again, we've had people here, especially students, when they're in their final year, some of them get to find out about koinonia. It's not like they do not know, but for many people, the God of this world has blinded their minds. They don't care. Are you getting my point? And some of us just sit down, we just watch. And the devil keeps destroying these lives. And then at a point where they have two or three weeks to get out of Zaria, then they come. And you see them crying and wondering and getting angry with you. And you say, sorry, it's okay now. And then you don't do anything about it again. The Lord is speaking to us. Do you know why many ministries, let me be sincere with you. Do you know why many ministries are small? Small in terms of membership and small in terms of impact look at every ministry that there is a rich investment of the ministry of the holy spirit they are committed to turning many into righteousness right and transforming lives why should i want the holy ghost in my life why should i want his anointing when i'm not interested in praying for the sick right when i'm not interested in 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 seeing people set free you see the church has reduced anointing to money hello hello and many of us are already becoming victims of this theology our concept of anointing is just power to prosper so i have the anointing meaning i have the anointing to prosper financially so you buy the car you buy the clothes, you build the house, you do everything, and you say, I'm anointed. If you have ever doubted my anointing, look at the fruits of my anointing. Car, house. Will car go to heaven? Answer me. Will house go to heaven? Listen, listen, brothers and sisters. We must begin to live having the passions of God in our heart. There are many of us here we used to be committed to genuine evangelism genuine evangelism and we are allowing this this demonic wave of complacency in the church to just come around there are many churches i say this with all apology and due respect they cannot even remember the last time they made an altar call and they don't care correct they don't care to an extent that we can preach and look at many evangelical meetings and crusades right now on the crusade ground is money they are raising and doing miracles as great as that is the end of all of these things is to see a soul not just saved in terms of the religiosity saved but lives transformed every society is a reflection of the quality of the mindsets that are there this is why we are passionate and committed we do everything that we do week in week out to make sure that souls are saved and lives are transformed you will notice that i've almost not missed any koinonia meeting no matter where i am no matter where i am i try to make sure that friday i am back you know why because 
this work is my primary assignment any external ministration is just an extension of the apostolic impact are you getting what i'm saying now but this is the core and some of you are pastors let me talk to you or some of you are men of god you have your church you are in a year you will only preach once or twice and members are just sitting down and being confused under different kinds of messages and theologies everybody coming with this i believe in the corporate impute of the body but the man the one that god has put as a shepherd you must stay and build the people you are constructing an ideology and it must be sustained so that the people are built in that ideology so that they won't be tossed through and full by every junk and every wind of doctrine there are some things when some of you here now you won't even pray about it is that true on account of what you have known the word of god comes to build you but when it builds you it creates a sense of responsibility you can't just be falling for nothing and then you stand up and you just clean your body and when you are going you say guy I fell today again. Oh, I've been falling the last three weeks. This person said, Me too. Oh, this thing, I don't know how it works. That's not the goal. It's not a thing to just, it's, it's, it's for you. How many of you here have, have sat down to say, Look, bring 5,000, bring 5,000. Let's make a very serious tract. Tract that is well edited and, and has the kingdom, not religion. Say, I don't have a ministry. You don't need a ministry, you need passion. You see, that's the mindset we all have. Huh? We believe that for impact to ever happen, you must have a ministry. So three friends come together, they bring the five, five thousand and say, come, let's settle this. Thing. Who is the Jew of this group? Who is the real Jew? If they sow a seed now, who does it go to? That is to be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. That's, that's really what carnality is. That you are already that see judas was not a bad person judas was a carnal person he looked at jesus and he had a business idea the name of his business idea was jesus how he can use jesus christ and make money that was all that was why he didn't even use the money he thought that when they come to catch jesus christ he would do his majestic thing again when he found out that that thing had backfired he died he killed himself How many of us here we are on facebook some of us some of us are on twitter some of us are and we well not 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 many i say this for the sake of those who will be listening to the message there are many of us it's just rubbish if you are happy today everybody will know on facebook that you are happy joyful the sun is shining tomorrow if you are angry this world what a dark place your whole your whole emotional life on display idleness we don't live with the consciousness of the kingdom as you are laughing please take seriously what i'm saying hallelujah yet we want to see the glory of god in our lives what is wrong with using your posts and say lord i may not be a man of god i may not have the power to heal the sick now but i commit myself is that true to making sure that every week one soul is saved i must come for koinonia with somebody sister how has your beautiful face translated into soul winning in the kingdom let me talk to ladies your beauty is either bringing people into the kingdom or taking people out of the kingdom is that true there's nothing as neutral so the brother sees you and says sister you are very fine say we give glory to the, the name of the lord i'm inviting you let me use this opportunity and invite you if you are afraid of talking to the person about jesus christ some of us once they just say you are beautiful they just say ah let me not bring jesus into it as if jesus is putting sugar inside food you know it's as if let me let me savor this moment now it doesn't come every day let me enjoy it jesus stay away let me not bring any religiosity and then the lord watches you from the throne and says you pray you want a ministry you want a ministry where you are everywhere you want an international ministry and god sees your heart and he knows that there are some levels of the anointing if we give this person you are going to be a disaster to the kingdom and he measured a thousand cubits 
that man was there until he proved that he was faithful then another thousand cubits was measured there are some of us even if you fast for 100 days i am telling you more anointing will not come until you step up your passion and your and your reckless abandon for the things of the kingdom we're afraid of being looked at as being fanatical right so many of us i'm not a man of god please please i can i can so see it you know there's this theology people teach there are those who give there are those who preach many people say i'm in the category of the givers no everybody is in all three categories you must give you must pray you must preach hallelujah don't just say me i'm a giver and then because the man of god really needs money desperately he said you are doing the same thing with me you who is giving me and preaching is all the same thing it's true that it's the same thing but if it's the same thing it means you can switch it's still the same thing preach to who has changed because of you how many of us does your presence judge sin and iniquity listen to what i'm saying does your presence i'm not talking of condemnation right i'm not talking of condemning people and just writing people off that's 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 something else that's a theology that came from hell but does your presence judge sin and iniquity truly that someone wants to do something bad and your presence is an inconvenience to the person for some of us your presence is a is a catalyst where's your head thank god you have even come sir And then let me not even let me not just bypass this how many of us have truly made up our minds to part with iniquity listen listen please do not ever think that there is a way of negotiating your way into intimacy with god if you really want authentic power iniquity must be far from you when I talk of iniquity, you, you know what I'm talking about. It must be far. Don't say it does not matter. Don't say it does not matter. I'm repeating it. You must hear me. Don't say it does not matter. You will never walk in authentic power. That's why a lot of people cast out demons. The demons cast them too. Because they know that Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. We joke around with the issue of sin and iniquity in the body of Christ. And then we believe that because God is gracious, right? Iniquity is what will give Satan access to your life, your state of heart. Iniquity is not just sleeping around or drinking and smoking. They are fruits of that iniquity. Iniquity is a state of heart that is perpetually rebellious towards God and the laws of the kingdom the psalmist said if I cherished iniquity in my heart the Lord would not have heard me who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart when there are still Christians giving bribe and taking bribe you will never see the hand of the Lord don't say it does not matter you want job somebody saying bring 250,000 and you are happy say it's like that it's nigeria please don't bring any church thing here bring it oh bring it because you are the don't try to dichotomize your life and say this is my social life this is my spiritual life what is the meaning of that nonsense in one of the revelations the four living creatures were in one body huh four dimensions functioning in one body We must be far from iniquity it has been the ancient key to the presence and the power of god and by the grace of god almighty we will not water it down in koinonia we will preach the full gospel i will tell you the truth the secrets that bring the glory and the presence of god there are many of us we watch all kinds of nonsense we think it does not matter look at look at the way your mind is huh? 
You can't look at a beautiful lady and just go free. As soon as they are sharing the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you feel like starting another service for yourself because you have, you have polluted your mind watching all kinds of nonsense. It's a culture. It's a sacrifice. Am I blessing you tonight? Oh yes, it's a sacrifice. There are many of us ladies, anybody, you can even be walking on the road, somebody will just park and say, enter. You say, oh, really? Let me enter first and find. What sort of, don't you live by values? Everybody say values. Say it, shout it, values. As a kingdom citizen, never forget this. We live by values. You may see us jump around, but let me tell you, the love of God constrains us. Hallelujah. Sister, let people be able to look at your life and say, how can a beautiful lady like this not be loose? And he said, no, I may be beautiful, but I have sold, I'm, I've given myself like a love slave to God. That I'm beautiful. You know, many brothers see our beautiful ladies. You know Koinonia has pretty ladies, right? Brothers, say amen. amen. They are your wives too, so say amen. amen. But listen to me now. The issue here is that before the transition between now and when they become your wives, you must mind yourself and discipline yourself and be a genuine Christian. Hallelujah. Brothers, let me give you a little secret. If you don't mind yourself with respect to ladies, I'm not talking of sleeping around ladies. Men that are overconscious about ladies never encounter the presence of God powerfully. I'm not talking of sleeping around. You are just thinking. It's, it's, still, it's still the same thing. You are, you are stopping your mind from entering certain dimensions of the secret place. I'm not saying frown at any lady after corner and say, mm, I'm pressing it to God. No, that's not what I'm saying. There are many of us, our own encumbrances is what I call carnality. What you wear. You can be thinking of what to wear for Koinonia from Saturday. Which one will I wear? Let me add, it's, it's good. We believe in excellence, but be careful lest it corrupts your time. We believe in excellence, but let me tell you, it's better to wear bathroom slippers and come and focus and flog it out with destiny and change your life. Who cares whether you wear your Versace or Gucci, thank God, but demons can bypass that Versace and oppress your life. And that's what we are trying to tackle in this place. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you take care of your spiritual life, then you can beautify your body. On the other hand, let me balance it. On the other hand, there are some of us that are careless about our our bodies we, we do not know that is still part of spirituality right what you wore yesterday you just look at it smell it not very smelly you just carry it and you're on your way to koinonia no. be intentional about your coming here don't make it look like it's a mistake be intentional plan these are all aspects of the kingdom let everything about your life neatness neatness thoroughness some of us are very dirty the way you are sitting down looking at me like this your rooms there are still plates that all these things are i'm just showing you how that your life must draw people it will either draw people towards god or away from him and don't you say it does not matter the bible says add to your faith virtue the word virtue there is moral excellence Say, I'm changing. Especially if you really are. Say it, I'm changing. Because some of you, as God is speaking to you, go back to your rooms and wash that plate this night. Wash it this night. Hallelujah. If, come sweetheart, if I'm going to get married to this lady, I'm taking my revelation of God together with all the unrenewed liabilities that I have I'm coming to say bring your own and, and let's, let's, let's wed in holy matrimony the question is are you going to be a blessing to your partner or the person will look at you and say had I known what deceived me what didn't I see huh? say I'm a blessing 
the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed bless you you must be a soul winner from today whatever you will do to bring souls to the kingdom i say whatever in the positive way right don't go and do all kinds of babylonian things and say whatever let souls be one no in the kingdom the means is as important as the end i've taught you right because if if you say i am doing this and that so that souls will come i i allowed the man to go for weekend with me because i'm trying to win him between now and the next one month he must be born again no no that's not that's not the kind of born again we're talking about praise the lord say in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i become serious with my spiritual life in the name of jesus i lay aside every weight and everything that corrupts my christian testimony two more things i'll talk about and then we'll pray and we'll be done hallelujah i want to talk about two things i have seen across that stops many souls from coming to the kingdom number one is anger among believers write it i don't know where this impartation of the spirit of anger flew and came from there are many of your anger is not demons the demons left since february miracle service but the anger is still there anger rage it is an aspect of your christian life you must blot out you must blot out please write it anger you can be as calm as a dove but when you get angry you can give it to anybody there are some sisters right here in this place you would have been married since if only you address this issue if you like go to prophet apostle pastor teacher you must change that thing. there are some brothers here you don't have friends say i don't care i'm in a world all by myself you have beat everybody close to you because of anger your younger ones run away from you there's nothing about your life that is pleasing because of anger there are many pastors today the anger and the rage they have they can finish preaching even on stage they can almost slap the other person i said sing 10 or what, what are you singing and you are wondering and then the guy turns and says, let's pray and he's looking i say number two immorality immorality let's bury this thing this night look at me look at me do not let anyone please 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 koinonia my conscience must be clear before god and i must tell you do not let anyone convince you convince you that a life of immorality you can be able to patch your christian experience and patch immorality i'm saying it now you must hear me in jesus name i'm i'm telling you this from the depths of my heart there are many of you as i'm talking even the holy spirit is saying thank you jesus finally i'm getting to i'm not condemning you <laughs> I tell you the number of believers sir the number of believers that are compromising on their christian integrity especially over the issue of immorality this is probably one of the biggest reasons why many souls do not come to the kingdom if you are involved in all those things i love you but you must stop this night in jesus name say amen whether it be, you are part of it or not say amen immorality is not just sleeping around hold on so that you don't just say thank god me i don't sleep around even god knows hold on pornography pornography right now we have our blackberries it's amazing you check christian phones and see the kinds of things there i'll talk about it pornography all kinds of other devilish things and don't just blame the devil 
day your roommate sees you and says, ah, what is this with naked? You say, it's, it's Satan. I'm, I'm even waiting for the end of the month. No, don't mock God. Don't mock God. Don't make it look like you come for miracle service and say, Lord, I'm open. And then you receive that one. There are many of us who are great men and women of God, but this is the setback in our lives. Right? Look, listen to me. This is, this is Bethel, the place of bread. Huh? What I'm doing to you now is like a, jo a doctor giving a patient injection. You feel the pain, but that chloroquine must enter so that you will be healed. Immorality. Sisters, let me talk to you. You must create rules in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have not been doing it, create rules. If you are in a relationship, talk about it. You are in a relationship with, with a lady. Part of the reasons why you are in a relationship with her is because you are physically attracted to her. Sit down and be saying, I'm a man of God and you'll be very surprised. Warn yourself. Tell yourself, myself, behave. Receive grace from God. Create boundaries. Huh? I, will, I will tell you this. Don't think, oh, this is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Man, if this law is going to keep you focused and useful, so be it. So be it. Hallelujah. There are many of us. Study yourself, sister. You know you are very vulnerable. Huh? Don't go as I say, I know he's just a pastor. It's been long since I washed his plate. Was the plate not washed? Was it not washed? Thank God for your generosity, but you must be careful. Anything you cannot do in the open is questionable. Are you getting what I'm saying? And many of us who are pastors here, you are the, we are the ones that are subject to the greatest attack. Hear me. Hear me. Man of God, you accepted the call and you are careless with your life. You will be very surprised. If there is the call of God upon your life, guard your anointing. You see the way men embarrass themselves. You can fake healing. Deliverance is what will really show you whether you are all of that. You'll be casting at the demons. The demons are just laughing and saying all kinds of things. It should never be so. We are going to pray because I know that there are people affected in these areas. Are you getting my point? And trust me, if you think you need help, please see me for counseling. I am more than more than willing to help you we are a family don't say i'm a man of god i'm struggling with masturbation or struggling with immorality and i think is 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 an issue there's nothing to be ashamed of are you hearing what i'm saying there is nothing to be ashamed of because you see spiritual things cannot be hidden for too long they will find expression immorality is something we, we must work. i know god is helping us we are young people right the tv the media all kinds of things the the challenge on the average young man right now is is maybe 100 times more than it used to be 40 50 years ago i understand that but it's still not an excuse and please don't let anybody fool you that everybody is doing it huh there are many of us that will tell you who is not doing it no mm -mm. There are people who truly, truly have taken advantage of the grace of God and they love God sincerely. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. Make up your mind. And if you think you cannot hold yourself, start finding a wife quick. Quick. No, 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 no. I'm very serious. I'm not playing games. The Bible says it. It is Bibles. I'm not saying you marry because, mm -mm, but the Bible says if peradventure in your quest to love God and you find out that you have prayed, you have fasted, you know that this one is not demons again, please marry. I'm telling you this. Marry. It is a biblical, I say, it doesn't change anything. Are you joking? Are you married to know whether it changes something or not? Just marry. Obey the Bible. Don't start arguing with scriptures. Anger. Immorality. Immorality. You have, a, you have pastor friends or groups sit together and talk about this. Talk about this in love. Don't condemn people. And you, when somebody comes to meet you and says, see, I find myself sleeping around. You say, I knew it. The way I've been looking at you, I know you are not straight. No, no, no. That ministry is not given to you because that's the issue. 
that's listen listen we're rounding up that's the reason why many people are unable to open up because they are afraid they don't trust us men of god they don't trust somebody comes and opens up and tells you this is the challenge in my life this is what i'm going through they will say ah have you had forget everybody you see preaching on stage oh, people are dying in silence the other person say what are you talking about I say i will just you something happened no as a minister you are a steward don't betray people's trust on you are, are you hearing what i'm saying but please i'm talking to you this is an admonishment from the depths of my heart you feel that there are issues compromising your christian experience and you need help by the grace of god god has anointed us to be able to offer you help and with jesus joy and with every open heart it's a privilege but don't sit down and die you can fake it before men but you see you are it's, it's a seed you are sowing it's a seed you are sowing we're going to pray just two prayer points rise up on your feet and we'll be done for tonight today's service was another dimension by the Holy Ghost hallelujah listen hallelujah while we are taking the first prayer point at the same time an altar call is going to be made please everyone listen this is a serious altar call there are many of us tonight who are saying lord please take my whole life i'm surrendering everything to you i'm tired of living life my own way you may have even given your life to christ before but you know that you are not serious with god and you want to step up your christian experience God has shown you that he wants to use you. He's shown you that he wants to do mighty things. But you are saying, Lord, I've, I've not truly surrendered everything. The moment we start praying, I'd like you to just come and go on your knees here. I would like to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Young, old, whatever. Please, you need to truly make up your heart and your mind to the Lord. Hallelujah. The moment we start praying, please, I'd like you to come up. We're out of time. Prayer point number one. Prayer point number one. You're going to say, Lord, put a passion for souls. Put a genuine passion for souls in my life. That beginning from tonight, I will begin to be serious about winning souls and making sure that people are established in the faith. Lift your voice and pray. While they are doing that, all those who need to come out, find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you're coming. The remaining, the rest of us, please keep praying. God bless you. All of you who are coming, just come and kneel down here before God. There are still people sitting down. The Lord is speaking to you. If you need to be out, don't wait for anybody. Find your way and come. While the rest of us pray. Take it seriously tonight. This is the beginning. Those of us who need to come out. This is the beginning of your journey. Your spiritual journey to relevance. Your spiritual journey. Find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is home for you. Find your way. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. If the Holy Ghost is telling you you need to be here, then you need to be here. I surrender. Surrender all I surrender. Those of you in front, open up yourself to the Lord from the depths of your heart. I surrender. All. I surrender all. Let's sing one more time. I surrender all. I'm not the person I used to be. I am a brand new person. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Listen, all of you. You are not the brother or the sister that just came and knelt down here. You are walking up totally free. I don't care what it is you have done. I don't care what has been the testimony. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all the... Th 
all things new in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit I declare by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that you use these ones may they be powerful men and women from today transform their lives I break the power of sin over your life in the name of Jesus I break the power that causes you to rebel against the ways of God I declare that from today you will have passion for the things of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen congratulations thank you so much I like you to celebrate them koinonia hallelujah praise the Lord please rise up rise up God bless you hallelujah I salute you for making this decision I like you to follow the ushers follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your information on Tuesday um, you pray with the prayer department so that you get filled with the Holy Ghost for those of you who are not filled with the Holy Spirit they will administer the baptism of the Holy Spirit please follow the gentleman waving his hands God bless you celebrate them koinonia hallelujah our time is up we can take um, another prayer request well that's okay for today um, before I invite those of us who are worshiping with us for the first time let me just take a few announcements now I want to announce something please next week Friday the Lord put this in my heart next week Friday I like us as a family of faith and all those who are connected to this ministry all across the nations all across this nation please I like us to fast hallelujah we are going to fast and your fasting starts from 6 p.m. on Thursday. Hallelujah. Not 6 a.m. on Friday. 6 p.m. That's Friday night. You won't eat anything. We're going to be praying. There are certain things that God wants to birth and bring. Hallelujah. So we're fasting from Thursday, 6, 6 what? 6 p.m. Right? And we'll run it as a marathon until... Um, if I said Friday 6 p.m., we will not eat before coming. So we'll break by 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is okay. So that you can eat before coming. Please, listen. It's a dry fast, complete dry. There's no sipping water or honey. There's none of those things. Please. I listen, listen. Those are our are, are children here. For the sake of the children, um, you may they, they can just start their fast from 6 in the morning to maybe 12. But if they feel they can go the extra mile, no problem. If you're sick and you're on medication, you can choose whether to join us or not. But please, everyone, Thursday from 6 p.m., it's not just to fast and sleep. By the grace of God, from Friday morning, this, this place will be open. Prayer department from Friday. If you people can pay the price, we'll allow this place. While the setup is going on, you can stay around, pray around. Just pray and prepare. By 3 o'clock, you go and eat well and come. You won't die. Please, don't frown at me like that. You won't die. This, listen, this, something will happen to your spirit. Some of you have done it. You've done more than that but just run it that marathon so whatever you have to do just know that once it is 6 o'clock even if you have not eaten the whole day once it's 6 o'clock know that the vehicle has started moving praise God it's moving down till that time all all escorts all escorts you are stretching till 6 all escorts were not stopping by 3 you are stretching till 6 all your food you can come and eat it here come and die here but still six please so the whole is not 12 hours now it's 24 hours and there is i know that there is capacity that we need to build in the spirit hallelujah praise the lord hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.